Well, we're thankful that you've joined us here today and looking forward to uh, having our worship service and thankful that you have joined in and hopefully you can get your family together, have your Bibles ready and we are going to have a great time singing together. We want to worship the Lord and we're looking forward to what the Lord's going to challenge us with through His Word today. We're going to begin with a word of prayer, so let's bow our heads and let's ask God's blessing on our time together here this morning. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the privilege as a church family to come together and to worship you. And even in these difficult days, as things are are different and uh, there's so much going on in our world, we're thankful that we have a God who loves us, who knows everything that's going on, and is concerned even about the smallest detail that we face. And so I pray that you would work in our hearts today. I pray that you'd challenge us and change us. I pray for folks listening there at home that you would speak to hearts and still hearts. I pray that uh, we'd be in a place where we can hear from you, and may we participate in the singing and the worship time, and I pray that we'd be faithful through this time as well to be, to be giving and supporting the work here at the church as well as around the world. We sure love you, and we praise you. Guide us in our time together today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to invite you today to sing along some, some familiar hymns with us, And we are uh, thankful for the privilege to do that. So join right in there at your house, sing uh, these songs. The words will be up there. And you as a family, join in. Lift your voice as we sing together on our hymns. singing there together as a family, and uh, we wish we could be together singing during this time. We're going to invite you to take a time now and worship the Lord with us. If you have your Bibles, I want you to look at Luke chapter number 8. Luke chapter number 8, and two verses, verses 49 and 50. The Bible says these words, While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master, but when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Charles Spurgeon told the story of an elderly lady in his church who was confronted by a skeptic over the story of Jonah being swallowed by a great fish. When he attempted to scientifically prove to her that it was impossible for such a thing to happen, her faith remained unshaken. Finally, she replied, Not only do I believe that Jonah was swallowed by a great fish, as the Bible says, but if the Bible said Jonah swallowed the fish, I would have believed that too. You know, it's interesting. There's times we believe only things that we understand. And right now in our world, it seems like there's things we don't understand. Why is this happening? And yet God knows. We're going to look in uh, just a few moments at God's providence in our life, how He's He's working through human affairs to accomplish His will. And here was a lady in the story that I just read who believed what God says. And the challenge is to us today, do we believe what God says? In Matthew chapter 19, verse number 26, the Bible records, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. I sure hope you believe that. I hope you believe that God can still send revival, that God can still work in the times that we live in today, and that God is still working, even though we may not see it, even though we may not be able to meet together as a church family. But God's working. And so let's, during this time, have faith for the impossible, because the God we serve is 
the God of the impossible. So I'm going to invite you right there in your homes, wherever you may be, to take time if you're physically able, as we do each Sunday morning. We're going to invite you to bow the knee. And let's take some time to worship Him. Uh, perhaps ask Him some things that may seem impossible. And let's seek the Lord right now, the God of the impossible. Father, we're grateful for the privilege that you give us to serve you. Thank you that you're the God of the impossible. And during these times, we're asking that you do some impossible things. We want you to continue to work in our families, in our church. And even though we're not able to meet, we're, we're asking that very quickly here in our country, you would, would allow us to be able to do that, guide our president, our vice president, and others, give them wisdom. And Lord, I pray that you would protect us. Thank you for still doing impossible things. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to invite you to continue singing another great hymn. And Brother Stevens is going to lead us. So sing along once again with us as we take time to worship the Lord in our singing. Once again, enjoy singing those great hymns. Wish we could hear you sing those, but we're thankful for that privilege to do that. Just before we go to God's Word, I invite you to have your Bibles ready. Have them open there. If I help your children find Romans chapter number 8, and uh, we'll be looking at that uh, text of Scripture, but also looking at some other places. But just before that, we got a special number. I think it'll challenge you during this time that we're in, and hopefully it'll encourage you as well. So listen as uh, Brother Stevens and Candace sing a song today and uh, let's prepare our hearts for the preaching of God's Word. Consider the lilies 
they don't toil or spin and there's not a king with more splendor than them consider the sparrows they don't plant or sow but they're fed by the master who watches them hasn't forgotten where you are. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows your needs, and uh, he wants what's best for you. I do encourage you as a church family to uh, be faithful during this time, although we're not able to meet together. I want to encourage you in your giving, in your uh, opportunities that you have to minister to those around you. I want to encourage you to do those things, and we invite you uh, as far as uh, tithing and giving, grace giving, and our missions giving. Uh, you can uh, drop that off here at the church. You can mail that in to the church address. Or if you need somebody to stop by and help you with getting that, we can do that as well. I do want to wish a few folks happy birthday. We uh, do this each Sunday. And this week, we've got a few folks from our church. Don't want to miss anyone. But we do wish some folks. Uh, Vicki uh, Haynes has a birthday this week. As a matter of fact, it's a pretty important one. And I'm not going to tell you which one it is, but you may want to give her a call or text her and ask her, see if she'll fess up and be honest about that. Uh, Beth Fritz and, and little Ariella, they both have birthdays. And then Diana, she has a birthday this week as well. So wish them happy birthday. Uh, drop them a card, or if you think about it, give them a call or a text and just say happy birthday to them. Romans chapter number 8, the Bible says in verse number 28, a very familiar verse, it says here, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. You know, if I would ask you that uh, a few weeks ago, if you believed that Romans 8, 28 was true, more likely than not, you would have said, well, sure I do. But maybe over the past few weeks, as you think about the things that have happened, you may question that. Lord, is, is this really working out for good? Recently, I was at a pastor's conference and, and a gentleman shared a story that happened in his life. Matter of fact, he... Uh, he and his wife had been happily married for quite some time, had some young children, two young boys, if I remember correctly. And uh, he had gone to a Sunday morning service with his two boys. His wife had stayed home, and he shared the story that he had come back and found his wife had taken her life in the living room of their home. And as he tried to shield his two young boys from seeing that, 
and he went into the house, he said it was as if the Lord said this to him. Now, you believe Romans 8, 28 was true yesterday. Do you still believe that's true today? And I think it's challenging that we think about that in the days that we live in. And yet I want to look at this verse and I want us to examine this thought that God is providentially working through the circumstances that we even find in our, ourselves in today. We may question, is God's providence at work today? It may be perplexing to you, but the truth is it is. When I was in Bible college, our pastor shared an illustration. I've never forgotten it. He brought out a glove, much like this one. This here is a work glove. You may use these working in the garden, or a uh, man may work them, use them working in his, uh, in his at his house, or perhaps even on his car. But uh, this is a picture, he said, of God's providence. The glove would represent human affairs, things that are going on in our world, and God's hand in those human affairs would be described as God's providence. Now, we see human affairs that are going on, but often what we don't see is how God is working those things for His good. That's why in Romans 8, verse number 28, we read that all things work together for good to them that are the called according to His purposes. God, He is a God who's interested in our lives. And although, as a Christian, as a believer, if you know Christ, that does not exempt us from problems. As a matter of fact... We are going to go through problems. We're going to face trials. Peter reminds us of that. We're reminded of that in the book of James and in other places of Scripture. We could go back to the Old Testament and read about Jonah and others who faced problems. But as a believer, there's things we have at our disposal. And perhaps you have found yourself going to those more often in the past few weeks. Number one, we have prayer at our disposal. We can go to the Lord at any time. We can uh, share our requests. We don't have to be at a church building to do that. You don't have to have a pastor present to do that. As a matter of fact, you have a, a Savior who intercedes for you. And so we have prayer at our disposal. We have the Holy Spirit to guide us. And He is there, right where, wherever we are, in the car, whether we're at the house, out in the yard, whether we're out and about. The truth is the Holy Spirit's with us. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that we have angels that watch over us. There are those that, that, uh, that are guiding us and protecting us. And yet there's times when Satan may tempt us, he may mislead us and even discourage us and even get us to live in defeat. And I remember reading about the story of Joseph. And you know when Joseph faced those situations, whether it was being taken into slavery or sold into slavery, when he was in prison... When he was falsely accused, it would have been very easy for Joseph to have looked at that and thought, well, you know, maybe I'm out of God's will. Maybe it's something that I've done. But what he would have, if he would have focused on that, is he would have missed out on God's providence in his life. God was using those things to develop him. He was using those things to mature Joseph, to prove him. And later we see, as we get to the end of the book of Genesis, God had matured him. His character had been proven. As a matter of fact, he became a mighty leader, not only to, to spare the nation of Israel, but also to save Egypt. And so we look at that and we read in Genesis 50, verse number 20, where Joseph said this, But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass it is, is, as it is this day to save much people alive. You know, difficulties do not necessarily prove that God is displeased. And on the other hand, prosperity in the absence of difficulty does not necessarily indicate God's blessing. So sometimes we look at things we're going through and we say, well, you know, God must be displeased or we're, we live in a time where our country is doing well and financially we're prospering and we think, wow, you know what, we're indicating God's blessing. But uh, we can go to stories in Scripture and we can see Examples in Numbers, the Bible records in the life of Balaam. There were times where God made the way difficult because he was trying to get someone to see his will. And remember the story there, uh, God uses a donkey to speak. And what he was trying to do is he was trying to prevent Balaam from doing something that God did not want him to do. Solomon recorded these words in Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 50. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressors is hard. So yes, there's difficult times that, that God can bring into our life to say, hey, I don't want you to go that way, 
But do you know there can also be difficult times where God is at work and God is providentially proving us and testing us and really building character in our lives because of something that he wants to do. I've been thinking over the past couple of weeks, could it be that God is allowing this in the life of believers to really test us, to prove us, uh, really maybe to get us alone with him and find out where our priorities were, are? You know, I don't know when the next time we'll be able to meet, but I wonder how many folks will show up just because they can get out and just because they can have fellowship with other people. And yet, in the good times, God still wants us to be faithful. In the good times, God still wants us to be out sharing the gospel with others. And so there are times where God hinders us and God prevents us from doing things that he doesn't want. And there's also time that God gives us blessing as an indication of his approval. In Isaiah 26, 7, the, the, uh, the prophet writes this, The way of the just is uprightness. Thou most upright dost weigh the path of the just. And then later on in chapter 42, and verse number 16, And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. So yes, there's, there's times where God allows blessings in our life and it is approval of, hey, you're doing a great job. But don't always look at those things. Joseph could have looked at what he was going through and said, oh, what have I done wrong? How am I out of God's will? And yet that was God's presence. Oh, how we need to be dependent upon the Holy Spirit. How we need to be faithful to be in this book right here. Because it is, it is yes, providence. God, the, the hand of God and the glove of, of human affairs. And yet we also have a Holy Spirit who we can depend upon to guide us and to counsel us. Many of the circumstances we face in life are because we're part of the human race, the human scene. And there's a problem. There's perplexing things that take place. Some of them are part of God's training for us. Some conform us to God's guidance. And then there's other times where Satan tries to discourage us and confuse us and mislead, you, and mislead us. You look at the story of, uh, of um, Job in the Old Testament. You know, Job was one of those stories that you read and, oh, we know the end of the story, but how easy would it have been for Job to really just say, wow, I mean, is it really worth it? And yet, once again, God was allowing that. You know, Satan has come and he's asked, I want, I, I want after Job here. And there were things God allowed, but through that, Job was tested. He was proven. And what he did was he, he looked to God and God taught him through those things. So yes, providence is important, and yet we recognize that God is in control of it all. Is Romans 8, 28 still true today as much as it was in Job's day? Yes, it is. And so we need to recognize that. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us and to counsel us. And what He will do is He will assure us through God's Word that we're on the right path. Do you know that God has a plan for you during this time? Satan also has a desire. He wants to kill and to destroy. God wants to give life. He wants to give it abundantly. That was his plan from the beginning. If you go back to Genesis, he, he had a plan in place. And, and yet you look there in Genesis chapter number 3 and you'll see that sin interrupted that plan. Satan came in and he tempted the human race. And he tempted, uh, he tempted Eve and Adam and, and they sinned. And from that point on, the human race was set on a course of disobedience against God. And yet in providence, God cared so much, what did he do? He provided Calvary. God provided Calvary so that man had an opportunity to repent and to turn back to God so that once again, the fellowship could be restored. So what was lost in the book of Genesis is going to be restored. We go to the end of the Bible in the book of, Re the book of the Revelation and we're reminded that sin and suffering has an end. The curse is going to be lifted. God and man will live in eternal fellowship together. There will be a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem. And there's one way to experience that and that is to come into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. What sin messed up, Calvary, through God's providence provided a way that man could be forgiven. And I encourage you today, if you have never come into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, 
Oh, we'd love to, to, uh, to have the opportunity to show you from God's Word. If you'll come to Him just as you are. If you'll confess to Him that you're a sinner and you will receive His free gift of salvation. You'll turn from your sin to the Savior. He will save you. And what you'll find is this. He can give you life that you never dreamed of, you never imagined. Oh, oh yes, there's still going to be problems that we face. But you have access to resources that God says all supply. And believer, can I remind you, if you know Christ is your Savior, then the Holy Spirit dwells within you, and you have that guidance during this time. You have that counsel. And you have God's Word each and every day to make sure you know that you're on the right path. Don't be misled or, or don't be deceived by Satan. Don't let him get you discouraged and defeated. Looking at your circumstances, recognize that God's providence is at work, even in the human affairs, even in a coronavirus, even in a, in a world that we live in that is corrupted by sin. God's in control, and He wants what's best for you. Is providence, is God's providence perplexing at times? Sure is. We're not always going to understand it, but we can trust Him. And I'm sure thankful we have a Savior who loves us and He cares about us and every detail of our life. Yes, Romans 8, 28 is true. And I want to encourage those of you who have never experienced the peace that comes through knowing Christ. Would you call out? Would you trust Him today? Father, thank you for the time that we've had to look in your word. I pray that you'd encourage folks. I pray that you'd help them to see that you're at work in their lives each and every day. And Lord, we praise you for how you're still working right here at Faith Baptist Church in the midst of the times we live in today. We're still trusting you, believing you. The God of the impossible is still able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And so we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you serve him today.